It's a blow-off valve. It's an HKS blow-off valve to be specific. It's a math based Subaru. Probably shouldn't put a blow-off valve on the car. But we're gonna do it anyways because the question is so frequently asked of why can't you run a blow-off valve on a math based car, your stock Subaru or any other stock car out there. So I've made this video in the past of differences between blow off valves and bypass valves and what's right for you. So right now, well actually, first of all, welcome back to the channel everyone. Uh, appreciate all the time you guys spend here. Also have some updates for the car that I wanna to talk to you guys about. But before we, uh, before we get into that, let's talk about this. So right now the car is tuned on a bypass valve and is math based. The car is not on speed density right now and it is, it is pro tuned for a bypass valve. So what the bypass valve does, just a quick recap here, is the MAF meters the air coming in, the bypass valve takes all that charged air that hasn't been pushed through the system after the throttle body closes, and it goes back into the intake track to be re-metered and re-sent through the system. Now what the blow-off valve does, I'm sure you're aware what a blow-off valve does, but instead of metering that air back into the system, it just vents it out to the atmosphere through the uh, through the end guy, little the little port end guy down there, you know what I mean. That thing. It shoots it all out, you get the cool whoosh noise or whatever it is. I'm going to do this today to show you guys uh, exactly what happens. Now, I can already predict that the car is going to run more rich. It's not going to run perfect. It might be a little bit laggy whenever getting onto the throttle. So we're going to get this guy installed onto the car. We're going to go out and we're going to drive the Subaru and uh, just kind of see what happens. I'll show you guys the access port readings as well. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll see if we get any knock, any anything that goes along with the correlation of that. Now. I don't recommend any of you do this. I really don't. Your car's not gonna be happy using a blow off valve versus a bypass valve when it's math based and tuned for a bypass valve. Like I said, your car's gonna run rich. It runs the possibility of just stuttering and not enjoying what's actually going on. In extreme cases over time, I mean, yes, you are gonna run really rich in between shifts. So essentially what's happening is your car is sending more fuel into the cylinders because it thinks all this air is coming in when all that air is going out. So then you're gonna start running rich, you're gonna have a lot more backfires, which a lot of you guys want. Um, but with that added fuel, you are gonna start destroying your catalytic converters. You're gonna foul out your plugs faster and just, there's a whole mess of things that'll happen. So like I said, I don't suggest any of you guys do this, which is why I'm doing it for you. So with that, um, I do wanna talk STI for a minute. Tomorrow, I start tearing this car apart. So Friday's video is going to be the disassembly, of some of the engine stuff, pulling off the intake manifold, getting out a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need in the engine anymore. And I also have an update on the build. I bought a turbo, it happened. So I was able to get the funds to be able to afford a turbo. Now it's not the turbo that I originally wanted. It is still an FP turbo, but it's not a green. It is now an FP blue that we're gonna be using. So the reason I decided to choose the FP blue is A, it's more um, affordable for where I'm at in life right now. It'll still make the power that we want, especially on ethanol. It'll get us to where we need to, and it won't be a huge detriment to the engine. So it is a nice little upgrade above the factory VF48. So I'm excited to get that FP blue in the car. It's gonna make a massive difference when it comes to actually getting the car tuned. Two days from, actually tomorrow, I start tearing the car apart. So expect all of those installs video, all of those install videos to start coming. Also, I really apologize about that train. God, I'm, I'm really over the trains. But anyways, uh, let's get over to installing this, uh, let's get over to installing this blow off valve onto the car. I'll kind of walk you guys through it. It's a really quick and easy process to do so. We're gonna be using the HKS super, sequen super sequential blow off valve. Uh, it's the series black one, so it just matches everything else I have going on over there. But I'll kind of go over what you need to do this real quick. I don't expect any, actually I'm not going to go over what you need because I don't want you guys doing this. So I'm a time lapse me swapping over to this guy. And then after that, uh, we'll hop in the car, we'll go drive it and see how it does with the actual blow off valve in the car and uh, see how the car likes it. Okay, actually a lot, I do wanna go over this with you guys real quick. So this is the piece of charge piping that we're swapping out and this is what we're swapping out as well. So this is my Cobb XLE bypass valve. Uh, the car was tuned with this one on there. So it essentially just reserves the air back through that tube, back over to this turbo inlet here, goes back through the turbo. The MAF is happy, the car is happy, the MAP sensor is happy. So ideally what you're gonna want to be able to run an actual blow off valve is a speed density tune. I'm not gonna go into speed density in this video because it's this very long, physics, calculus, mathematical equation, uh, but it essentially just meters the air based off of volumetric efficiency, uh, how much it thinks it's seeing, how much it's actually seeing, but speed density, it's this huge thing. I'm not going to go into it right now, but I'm gonna get this charge pipe swapped out. I have a plug for the actual uh, research tube going back to the intake track, so that way we're not just losing all this air into the atmosphere. So let me get this swapped out real quick. We'll hop in the car after I get it swapped out and we'll go drive it and uh, see how the car likes it.
All right, so before I swap these on the car, I do want to show you guys the difference between them. So this is the blow-off valve that we're swapping on the car. As you can see, there is no recirc tube like the bypass valve has. The whole point of this recirc tube is to push that air back into the turbo inlet so that way that metered air that has already been accounted for goes back into the system versus where this guy doesn't have that at all. It's just going to kick the air straight out of the side there. So just wanted to give you guys a visual representation of the blow off valve versus the bypass valve here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get that other tube swapped into the car now. All right, so I have the blow off valve plumbed up, everything's hooked up. The old research valve is uh, blocked off with this little turbo smart block off plate that I got just for this video. Now. I'm gonna start the car. I'm gonna see how it idles. We'll uh, we'll record it. Make sure that everything is hunky dory. If the car is idling awful and it doesn't want to idle steadily, we're not gonna take the car out. If it idles fine, we'll take the car out. We'll drive a little bit and we'll see how it responds to having this setup. Uh, but since it is pro tuned with a bypass valve and not this blow off valve, I'm not gonna risk damaging the engine overly uh, just for the sake of this video. But if it does idle awful, it'll prove the point that. Uh, the car is not happy with it. So let's get it started. Let's see how it responds. If it idles normal for about five minutes, we'll take it out. We'll make sure everything is, eh, we'll, we'll take it out and we'll see what we can do. I have a feeling the car is not going to be a happy camper. Let the access port turn on first. All right, so we have the access port turned on. Um, like I said, if anything value wise over here is getting like off the charts, the car is not wanting to run properly, I'm going to shut it off and uh, we're not going to drive the car. If everything is normal, op if everything is operating normal as it should, we'll take the car out and we'll see how it handles. Uh, I am expecting it to not uh, fully run normal. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to monitor all of this. Uh, I'm going to let the car fully warm up. We'll give it a couple revs before we take it out. If everything is hunky-dory after, uh, after that, we'll take it out. We'll see how it uh, responds to driving. Uh, so we're pretty warmed up. Now, I can see that the car isn't running too much richer, but I can really smell fuel. Uh, might just be my imagination. But uh, I have launch control set at about 5,500. I'm just gonna set it up to launch control. I wanna see how everything is responding on the access port. If everything, like I said, if everything looks normal, we'll take the car out. If I see anything detrimental, I'm gonna turn the car off and we're not gonna continue. So let's just, uh, let's see what happens here. So I got an immediate fine knock learn. So everything looks all right right now. The car smells very rich. It smells very, very rich. But overall, the car is running okay right now. So I'm gonna get the car pulled out. Oh my God, dude, it smells incredibly rich. Jesus. So I'm gonna get the car pulled out. We'll go drive it for a minute. We'll see how it responds, but the car smells incredibly rich. Uh, we got some fine knock learn. I'm not gonna go too far from the house because I don't wanna risk uh, damaging the engine. So we're gonna do this uh, very carefully and we're just, gonna, we're just gonna go putter around a little bit. I actually decided I'm not going to take the car out. So just pulling it out of the garage, you can see, watch the RPMs as I drive. RPMs drop incredibly low and I'm not comfortable driving the car like that. Right there, you can see the car is having an, oh God, it's having some issues staying alive right now. I'm actually gonna shut the car off, hang on. As you guys kind of saw, as soon as I turned the car on, as soon as I gave it any type of gas, the fine knock learn kicked up. And as soon as I actually started driving the car, as you could see the RPMs just, it, the car wanted to die every single time. So the reason that that was happening is just because of that air that's not being metered back into the system, it's not being accounted for. So therefore the car is, it's very confused. It's shooting too much fuel into the cylinders. It's running very rich. I can smell, I wish you guys could just smell the richness coming from back here, but it is incredibly rich smelling and it's, don't do it. I, I get this question. I see this question. I don't even get it. I see it all the time on all these forms of, hey, can I run this blow off valve on my stock STI or stock WRX? I highly suggest you do not do it. These are just some of the reasons and I'm not even going to drive the car out there because I don't feel comfortable driving the car without this being tuned. And it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to me to potentially destroy the engine uh, just to 
make a point. But hopefully this does get the point across where you really shouldn't be driving the car with a blow off valve if it's not properly tuned for it. These are just some of the detrimental things that can happen. Now, my intent for the video was to go take it out and drive the car and actually show you guys the kind of responsiveness of it. But with the RPMs just wanting, the car wanting to die consistently, I'm just, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna take it out. I, I do highly suggest that you guys stay with a bypass valve. That metered air going back into the system is crucial for the car to run properly. Like I said, you can potentially wash your cylinder walls with fuel, get fuel in your oil as it goes down the cylinder walls if it's not all combusting. It can go back through the exhaust, destroy your catalytic converter, it can cause a lot of issues. I know everyone wants the cool noise coming out as you guys heard, it sounded cool. It sounded cool, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not gonna run that. Don't do it, don't suggest it. So I'm actually gonna get that piece of charge piping taken off the car. I'm not even gonna put this one back on uh, because I'm not driving the car anymore. I'm gonna start tearing it apart tomorrow. So I'm just gonna pull that one piece of charge piping back off so that way I don't have to worry about anything that I kind of plumbed up later on. So let me get that put back together real quick and then we'll talk a little bit more and uh, wrap this video up after I get this kind of put back together. Now it still smells just a little bit rich, but I am assuming that it's gonna be from all the residual fuel that we just tried to push through the exhaust and it's just starting to burn off now. So now that we have everything back together, the car is happy again. Um, this should be a good visual representation for you guys if you are looking to put a blow off valve on your car. I would, I would highly recommend steering away from that and sticking with a bypass valve, or if you really want the noise, get a hybrid blow off valve so you're at least getting some of that air back into the intake track. As you saw, the, the car wanted to continue to die every time I would give it a little bit of gas. It's shooting all this fuel in the car and the car just isn't happy with it. So bypass valves, if you're math based and um, you're not pushing for major horsepower, if you are pushing for major horsepower, talk to your tuners. Um, they'll, they'll tell you the route that you need to go exactly to get wherever you wanna, whatever end goal it is that you're trying to achieve. But I did just wanna make this video to give a visual representation for everyone who does consider running a blow off valve on their stock STI, on their stock WRX. And these are some of the issues that you're gonna run into and it's really not good for the car. You can cause damage over time. Just. Like I said, just talk to your tuners. They'll point you in the right direction. But anyways, that's all I've got for you guys. Um, I need to get the STI pushed back in the garage a little bit and start organizing all the parts up there so that way we have a game plan for installing all of these. So I'm gonna start pulling off the intake manifold tomorrow, getting out a whole bunch of the other crap in the engine bay that we're just not gonna be needing. Um, the secondary air injection pump, all the charge piping is gonna have to come out, the intake manifold's coming off, so all of this stuff is gonna be coming off. I'll do detailed install videos of everything that we have up there. I'll do a turbo unboxing for everyone, so that way we can compare the FP Blue to the OEM VF48, so that way you guys can get a representation of what the turbo differences will actually be. But with that, that's all I really got for you guys, so if this video helped you, if you're new to the channel, if you're just scrolling through YouTube, sitting on the toilet, maybe pooping at work or pooping at home, Home. I don't know. If you liked it, go ahead, just like it. Turn it blue like the Subaru. Ooh. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be what you should be because we're getting tuned in a month and we have all those parts and install videos coming, go ahead and subscribe up in this corner right here. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!